Hey everyone, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. If you would, please like this video right now and subscribe for more great ham radio videos in the future. Today we're going to talk about how to make your first contact on a repeater if you're a new ham radio operator. Now when you first get your ham ticket, there are a lot of nerves and you may be nervous about keying the radio and having that first conversation. The first thing you want to do when you get to a repeater system is just go ahead and say your call sign and say you're monitoring. When you say that, what you're telling people who are listening is, I'm on the air and if you want to talk to me, I'm here. It'll go something like this. K0LWC monitoring. Just that simple. Now again, if somebody wants to talk to me, they're going to go ahead and give me a call back right now. Uh, I'm currently on the Castle Rock Repeater Group, uh, Repeater here in Colorado, which is 146.670. Let's listen in and see if anyone's there. Doesn't sound like it, but let's go ahead and give out another call and let's see if I can find someone and ask them what they would recommend for making your first contact. Anybody monitoring the 670 machine for a quick uh, hand here with a YouTube video demonstration? I'd appreciate it. This is K0LWC. Let's see if anyone's out there monitoring. M0JJK, go ahead, radio check. N0JJK, K0LWC. Uh, thanks for coming back to the call. Uh, I'm just in the process of making a YouTube video uh, for new hams, and I just wanted to ask the question to anyone that was out there monitoring. Uh, the video is about making your first contact on a repeater. I think uh, all new hams that uh, don't have a lot of experience, you know, sometimes get a lot of nerves jumping on the repeater for the first time. So just making a short little video about, you know, how that goes and, you know, it's a kind of best practice. Anything that you can you know, add to that, what would you recommend to someone that just got their ticket, you know, is kind of nervous about getting on the repeater, um, you know, what would you kind of say to that? I'm curious to your thoughts. N0JJK, K0LWC. Sir, I applaud your efforts. Uh, the best thing I could recommend is that they master their radio in the aspect of uh, repeater onset and so forth. There is not a call these days, but some older radios and so forth. Uh, that is key. Um, back when I started this eight plus years ago, I didn't know about the repeater offset, and I was kind of curious to why I couldn't make contact with local repeaters. Hopefully this helps you. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great thing uh, to mention in the video is talking about offsets because a lot of people just tune into the output um, and don't understand you know, the whole input versus output thing. So absolutely. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't give my name before. The name here is Matt. Uh, what's the name there on that end? M0GJK, Todd and Brighton. All right, Todd, well, I said that's great information, and I'll definitely include that here in this video, um, which you can find on my channel just by Googling my call sign, um, and you'll find it. So, uh, Todd, thanks so much for coming back to the call and that great tip, because that's a very common one for people. So I really do appreciate it, and uh, have a great rest of your evening. N0JJK, K0LWC. Thanks again, Todd. So Todd in North Denver wants you to be sure you know how to use your radio and how to set an offset for a repeater system. So what is an offset? Now when you're looking for repeaters in your local area for the first time, what you're going to see usually is one frequency followed by either a plus or a minus symbol. That plus or minus symbol is telling you what the offset is for that repeater. When I'm listening to a repeater frequency, I'm listening to the output frequency. That's what the repeater is broadcasting out, and that's where you're listening into what's being said on the repeater. Now, when I key up my microphone and transmit, it actually changes the frequency on the radio, and I'm transmitting on another frequency, actually about six kilohertz, either higher or lower than the output frequency. So the repeater system on the big radio tower is listening in on one frequency and then immediately rebroadcasting the transmission that's coming in on the input to the output. So when you're looking up your first repeater system, pay close attention to what it says after the frequency. Is it a plus or a minus? If it's a plus, then you have to set it for a positive offset. If it's minus, you have to set your radio for a minus or negative offset. 
Then after that frequency, you're also going to see potentially another number or it may say PL and then a number. A PL is a PL tone. That is essentially a carrier embedded in your transmission that your repeater system is going to be looking for. If it doesn't see a PL carrier in your transmission, it's basically going to ignore you as if it doesn't hear you at all. Think of a PL tone as like a key in the lock to open up a repeater and actually get access to it and use it. Without that key, the repeater will stay locked and pretend you don't exist at all. In the case of the repeater that I'm using, this is again the 146670 Castle Rock Colorado Repeater Group repeater. It has a negative offset, so that means I'm actually transmitting on 146.070. So in the repeater book, this repeater would look like 146.670 minus. The PL tone for the Castle Rock repeater is 107.2. So I'm making sure in my radio that I'm setting my PL to transmit a 107.2 carrier to access this repeater. If I didn't have my PL turned on, I wouldn't access the repeater system. And most of all, remember this. Everybody on the air has been in the same exact shoes as you. We've all been there on the very first contact. We've all been nervous. Don't be afraid. Just Put your call sign out, say monitoring, or if you hear somebody do that, give them a call back. Say their call sign, give your call sign, and say hello and have a conversation. It's as simple as that. We've all been there, and believe me, many ham radio operators want to help you and will congratulate you being on the air, making your first contacts, and help you with any questions you may have. The key is, get on the air, don't be afraid. You're not going to make any crazy mistakes. People are there to help you. As Todd said, that's what the hobby is all about. If you haven't, don't forget, thumbs up on the video, subscribe for more great ham radio videos, and I'll see you again next time.